This is Kat's Diamond Painting. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you have joined me here before. I am here today to do a kitten chat, which is a version of a whip and chat. Basically, I am going to be kitting up my next project and filling you in on all things cat from the last few weeks, I think it is, since I last filmed one of these. Um, so today I am going to be kitting up Cletus Early Bird. This was a painting that I picked up in Diamond Art Club Cyber Monday sale. Um, and I've chosen to work on this one next for a few reasons. One, I really love this artist's work, Richard Lorenz, and I haven't worked on one for quite a while. Two, I'm currently working on a couple of projects with very bright colours, so I thought it was a good time to get through one of the ones in my stash that I love the image, but it's just a little bit darker, um, a little bit more neutral tones and the things that don't always call to me. Um, and thirdly, it's, it's nice and small, well, smallish. It's, it's one that I thought I could get through reasonably quickly. And at the moment, I'm finding that I'm quite often struggling for time a little bit compared to what I'm used to. I'm not getting as much diamond painting time. Um, so yeah, <laughs> a smaller project that I can get through is appealing. Right, so I did unbox this kit when I got my Cyber Monday purchases, so I'm not doing that today. If you want to go check it out in more detail, you can go find it on my channel from probably December, I imagine. Yeah, it must have been December by the time it arrived to me. Um, and it will be labeled Unboxing Cyber Monday Purchases or something similar. So I have got 58 colors to kit up today. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get through all of those in one in one session. I have maybe about an hour or so, I'll see how I'm getting on. Um, this kit did come out at a time when there was still a fair amount of static in a lot of Diamond Art Club kits. They, they went through this phase where something got a little bit skew with in their production and all of the kits were coming out with tons and tons of static in the bags of drills. I think this is maybe from the period where they were starting to sort that out, but yeah, I'm, I'm assuming there will be some static in the bags and I might have to deal with that. So I have had all the drills in the freezer for a couple of days and then I will use all the other methods that I use if and when I need them. Right, first things first, I am going to copy this in my printer copier thingamajig um, so that I can chop all this up and use it but still have a key. So I'm gonna go and do that and then I'll be right back. Okay, I've got that copied, so I'm just going to chop it up. What am I doing? <laughs> I apologize, by the way, if you can hear any sort of background humming noise. Um, the building site opposite me, where they're building 10 new houses, it's very nearly done, and most of the time recently it's been quiet over there because they're more or less done. <laughs> um, but the past couple of days they've had people there. I think they are taking down the, um, the curb, the edge of the pavement um, to make, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Like dropped curbs for cars to park in the new houses. Anyway, they've been quite noisy again, which is unfortunate when I need to do this. So here's my stickers. This will go in the log book that I'm starting. Um, I'm not sure the order of when this video will come out versus when that will, but I do finally have a logbook <laughs> um, and there will be more information on that soon. Um, and this I'll just keep so that it's a movable key. It's particularly useful with larger paintings, but when I have a canvas on my easel and I, if I can't see the legends on either side, I've got this. So I suppose I can still quickly show you Cletus, can't I, just in case you haven't seen him before. So here he is. It's a very grumpy looking bird. <laughs> Richard Lorenz does these bird paintings and I just, I love them. Um, I have a few of them. And Family Circus, the first one that I did last year, is still one of my favourite paintings I've ever completed. So yeah, I think this one would be really fun. Okay, I don't actually need that right now, so I'm going to put that to the side. And today I'm going to be using 
this storage. It's just a, well, it's 120 bottles in here, but there's two trays. So I'm just gonna need to use one tray. Um, and I think the easiest way to do this is if I just labeled them all first, and then I find them as I need them when I get the drills out of the freezer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Right, I'm all set up. I've got my drills off to the side here. Not my drills, my pots. <laughs> I've got my first batch of frozen drills <laughs> out of the freezer. I've got a big bowl that I will just put all the bits of plastic rubbish in. I've got a tray. I like to kit up over a tray so that when I drop drills, which I inevitably do, there's a chance they'll have been caught. Obviously scissors. I've got a couple of bits and bobs that I'll need if there is static. And I have some baggies and labels because there's going to be some colours where I definitely can't fit them all in one pot. So let's get started. Okay. I brought out the bigger bags first because they looked like they were a little less prone to static. So we shall see if I was right. <laughs> A lot of these I can see straight away have more than one bag. So I'm gonna have quite a few where they don't all fit into one of these pots. Cause these are a good size, but they, they don't fit loads. And like there's three bags of this color. So straight away, two of those are going straight in the bag and three ten as well. Okay, so I will put these full bags aside to kind of defreezify. <laughs> right now they're all wet and condensation-y, so I need that to that to ease. So I put them to the side and then I can get started with these ones. So 310, that's a good good one to start with, black drills. So how is everyone today? It has been a hectic morning here. I think, I mean, I never help myself because I never um, get up early enough. <laughs> I'm a bit of a night owl, naturally. Um, I do like to kind of, do you know what I'm thinking? I could just use a Sharpie on these. Ooh, that would save me using sticky labels. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm going to use the sticky labels. I'm going to stick to my usual system. Sorry, absolutely um, off topic there. So, what was I saying? I may as well do labels for these others as well while I'm at it, because they're definitely going to be in the same boat. Yeah, I'm a bit of a night owl. So I never ever get to sleep as early as, as the sleep I need would require me to. <laughs> you know, I kind of come awake in the evening. It's quite annoying. So I try my hardest to get early nights when I know I've got a busy day, but I can't necessarily drop off. Um, so yeah, I wasn't up late, but I wouldn't say I slept brilliantly. I, I mean, I don't usually <laughs> sleep that well, to be honest, too many aches and pains. But it was not too bad. I was up this morning, saw my son off to school. My husband takes him in the mornings, but I like to see him off in the morning. Um, and then I had to pack up some orders, which is always very exciting. Um, I'll put these open ones in a bag like this, by the way, and store that in the lid of my storage case. Um, oh, oh dear. Urgh. Open. Is that just broken or has it got a bit of thread caught in it and I can still use it? Yeah, a little bit of fluff there. Let me cut that out and it should work better. Anyway, get to the point, Kat. What's your morning been like? Um, so yeah, I have a few orders overnight, which is always really nice to wake up to. So I um, packaged all those up. I do my orders first thing. Like normally, if I'm home and I don't have anything else on, I dispatch the next day or the same day if someone orders before I'm up in the morning. 
so um, those are orders for my shop. <laughs> if you're, oh my goodness, this is like the most chaotic ramble I have ever delivered so far. Yeah, orders for my Etsy shop, which if this is the first video you've seen from me, you wouldn't have known what I was talking about. So yeah, <laughs> so I did that. And then I ran over to Tesco, which is a big supermarket here in the UK to pick up some bits we needed for dinner. Oh, someone's at the door, hang on. Well, that was exciting. New fragrances for my putties, stickers that I need for putties, and some sandals I bought off TikTok shop, all in one go. Yeah, so I went over to Tesco. My husband has volunteered to cook tonight, which is really nice. So I asked him to make a meal that I just particularly love and he always cooks better than me. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else is the same. So I do the majority of the cooking in this household. Um, my husband does cook sometimes to give me a break. And there are certain meals which, although I'm just as capable of following a recipe as, as him, you know, he will make better than me. And I find, once he's made that recipe, he will always be the one who makes it. And if I make a, res a recipe first, I will always be the one who makes it. Um, because if we try it the other way, it's just not as satisfying. Anyway. So I went over to Tesco, bought probably twice as much as I needed for dinner tonight. Because <laughs> I normally do quite a lot of online food shopping um rather than going in so i'm not used to going in there and they had all the um reduced items so um yeah i was browsing all the reduced items picking up some things like um vegetarian meat substitutes for my husband which are quite pricey generally but they had some on a good offer so yeah bought a few bits and bobs then i come back here and i've been I've had to sort the kitchen, I've had to get washing on, and then I knew I needed to get to this early in the day. And I don't think, I mean, it was probably 11 o'clock when I started. <laughs> Hence why I don't have a ton of time to do it. So yeah, it doesn't sound like that much when I put it all like that, but it, it's felt chaotic to me. <laughs> Where did I last leave off my last chatty video? Because I like to kind of just fill you in on a little bit of everything. So I'll try and catch you up on anything you might have missed. Although I don't think there's been anything terribly exciting going on around here. Um, I think it was about a week or so before my son's half term last time I filmed. Yeah, it was. So. They have, um, in the UK, kids have half term holidays to break up each of the three main terms. So at the end of a proper term, you get a longer holiday, but in the middle, there's just a week off, which is a nice chance for them to, you know, reset and have a little break. So the last week of school before half term, um, we had the May Day celebration at my son's school. So they do this thing, um, so, I think this is a British thing, I could be wrong, and I don't know a lot about it because it's not something that I did at school, um, but some schools make quite a tradition of it. That one's gone well, hasn't it? Green drills everywhere. Even the, oh, even the tray didn't help me that much. So yeah, they do this whole school thing where every single class learns a dance and obviously they get more tricky as they go up through the school. They have a maypole, which is part of the May dancing thing that you dance around this maypole. And it's basically a big pole, as the name would suggest. And then it's got lots of brightly colored ribbons and the kids kind of dance around it and weave in between each other. So it makes patterns. It's hard to describe, but it, it, it's really cool. Anyway, the highest class in the school, the year sixes did the maypole dances and the other kids did slightly different dances. So my son is in year four which is the, well, it's the year that you start as an eight-year-old and finish as a nine-year-old, <laughs> if that makes sense, for people in uh, other countries with different school systems. So he did a dance, so his class did a dance with one of the year three classes, and it was, it was really nice to see. Um, I actually couldn't see that much because 
you go and line up in the playground and you don't really know where your child will end up being and we'd we'd kind of guessed wrong and then there was another teacher who lined her class up right in front of where we were standing like they were going to be the next dance and she lined them up in front of where we were standing and I'm very short so then I was a bit scuppered <laughs> which was a shame it was actually um it was one of those things that it was a really nice thing that the school did but I kind of wish they would have maybe broken it up a bit because they did the whole school all in one go. It was a hot day and yeah it was quite a lot standing around in the playground watching everyone ah hit some static. Okay so I'm going to cut that top off and then blow into the bag to add some more moisture. And now holding it over and shaking it up and that little bit of moisture helps to combat the static and they should hopefully pour out a little easier now. Oh, <laughs> that was more me being clumsy than the drill's fault. There we are. Not the best, but not the worst. I think for that one, what I'm going to do is put in a little bit of tin foil. So this was another tip that I learned. A little rolled up bit of tin foil, foil even, um, popped in there. Helps, this, this, there is actually science behind it, something to do with electrons. <laughs> I don't know, I looked it up before, um, I can't remember. I find it doesn't do much straight away, but then the next time I come to them, they should hopefully touch wood be better because that's how it's gone in the past. So six, four, five. Yeah, so, <coughs> excuse me. My son's class did theirs and it went very well even though I couldn't see that much. Um, but yeah, we, we were standing around in the hot playground for quite a long time watching them and it was a lovely thing for the school to do, but yeah, it's it's quite a lot to watch every single class do, sometimes multiple dances. <laughs> maybe that could have been done just a little differently. Or maybe I'm just grumpy. That is entirely possible. Right, three, seven, eight, one. Um, what else did I do that week? I, was, I think I was just trying to kind of get ahead of myself when I know my son's got a holiday coming up. I just try and get really ahead with things like filming, with things like stock for the Etsy shop, um, because I know I won't have as much time when he's off. This one's a bit sticky again. <sighs> Top tip if you're doing that, make sure you don't do your inhale too close to the bag still because you will find you inhale a lot of drills and that's not nice. <laughs> there you are. It's not perfect but you can see they, they, they're a lot better as soon as I did that. Oh, some more tin foil. I think I'm probably going to need more screwed up bits of tin foil. A lot of people put dryer sheets in as well. Little tiny pieces of tumble dryer sheet. Um, I find that that works pretty well with sort of normal static, for want of a better word. Um, but this particular brand of static that was an issue with Diamond Art Club drills for a while, that was, you know related to this specific manufacturing issue, it, it's something else. It's really, really stubborn. And I found that dryer sheets didn't actually do quite enough to help with it. I think this, this one doesn't look too bad. Some of the others don't look good. So I'm gonna bring out the rubber and alcohol. I've been thinking that a video I might like to do at some point is, is just all the tips that I have learned and what works for me when dealing with static because it is something you'll always encounter now and again with drills. I mean, there won't be anything in it that I haven't, you know, already shown on these kitting up videos really. Um, but for people who don't watch these or people who just want to have all the information in one place, I thought that that could be quite interesting. Wow, that is 
way too full but equally they will just fit so I don't really want to set up a Ziploc bag. I'll probably have regrets when I try and open that and they go everywhere but I'm doing it, they're in. 3864. 3864. How's that one look? Not too bad. I'll say as well, when I um, put all these in the freezer, before I did that, I poked a hole in each bag so that more moisture could get in because it's really the moisture that's going to combat the static. <sighs> this is why a lot of people... Um, will say that static is all to do with climate and weather, that it's living in a dry climate and that causes it. Um, because dryness will cause static, absolutely. And I'm trying to add moisture to them. That's what deals with the static. But where I live is not a dry climate. The UK is in fact known and has a reputation for how rainy it is. Um, so that is not the thing that's going on here. Yeah, end of that week was the start of half term. My son is always delighted to break up for holiday, as any self-respecting child is. Um, what did we do? Oh yes, we had a garden party at my husband's work that weekend. So he works for one of the Oxford colleges and they have an annual garden party, which I think is probably more geared towards alumni benefactors that kind of thing but because he's staff we got tickets and went along we took my son obviously and we actually took a friend of his along as well so he would have some company I don't like the look of this one <laughs> I'm gonna go straight in with blowing so that was nice it was um oh, it's not room to shake them around it was a very hot day um, so it's absolutely beautiful sitting there in the garden. <sighs> there wasn't a whole lot to do. So we ate. There was a really gorgeous buffet, in fact. Um, and the kids, there was entertainment put on for them. But my son can be a bit fussy about that kind of thing. And he was not keen. Um, oh, this is just too full, I think, is the problem. I think with this one, it would be better if I put more of them back in the bag so that there's room for something like tin foil to do its magic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we took along a friend for my son, um, but he did not get on with the activities because they were doing stuff that involved getting wet. Um, which apparently is a hard no for him. He said, if I was in my swimming costume, it'd be fine. But you wouldn't wear a swimming costume to a garden party, would you? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it was, it, we stayed for the two hours or so it was on, but as my husband said, I'm not sure we'll go again next year. It's a bit hard work with us and not really enjoying it. And actually most of his colleagues weren't there. Mostly it was alumni. I think he thought it'd be a bit more of a social thing with friends. But sadly that was not to be. 3861. So many neutral colours. But I don't mind because it's a smaller painting. As much as I always bang on about bright colours, I do like to have a variety. And I think because this is a smaller painting, it should be fine. Also, mostly these big bags of, of neutral colours are going to be reflected in colour blocking, so I can just get through them quite quickly. Right, let me get some more drills out. Here we go again with some of the smaller bags. I think really this would work best if I only got a few drills out of the freezer and then did those and then went back and got more because they can kind of... They dry out 
and then some of the benefit of the freezer is lost but I don't want to keep having to stop and start and go back and forth so it is, it is what it is so then in the half term what else did we do um, I was cat sitting that weekend as well I had two cat households to look after um, which was really nice. They were both one visit a day, so I could just get up in the morning, go to both over the course of the morning, and then I'd be done for the day. But it's always nice to do because I love hanging out with cats, first and foremost. But also, as I've said before, because that's like a little bit of extra income, that's sort of my diamond painting funds. That's what I use to buy paintings. So that's always exciting to me on many levels when I get a cat sitting job. 3810. They were two of my very shy cat households. Um, one of whom I saw for the first time. Normally he doesn't even let me see him, but he wasn't particularly comfortable. And the other one has warmed to me a lot since I first met her. And then what else did we do in half term? Gosh. It already feels so long ago and it really wasn't. I think my son had a couple of days of just sort of relaxing at home. He's pretty, I mean, he loves spending time on screens and it's sort of the battle that all parents have these days, isn't it? How to find the balance between encouraging them to do other things and not just being totally obsessed with their screens, but also recognizing that it's 2023, that's the world we live in, that's how they speak to their friends, and yeah. He doesn't have a phone, well, he, he uses a phone that doesn't have a SIM card in it, um, so he can play games on it and that kind of thing. But he doesn't actually have a SIM card in it, which means he can't do things like text people and he doesn't have any social media accounts or anything like that because he's nine. Um, but he does things like video calls with friends um, where they then both play a game together online. Um, things like Roblox and Minecraft, you know, that kind of thing. Which we're fine with because, you know, that's a way of socialising. And he plays various video games and he likes watching TV and just all the usual things. So, yeah, it's a constant source of discussion and angst and wondering if we're getting the right balance. Because he is an only child, so I think that sways us more towards being more relaxed because, you know, we, we chose to not give him a sibling, essentially. Um, but, yeah, it, 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 it's his way of unwinding. So I like to let him have a day or two in the holidays where he can just relax at home, do whatever he wants, and I know that that means he'll be attached to screens all day, but that's his way of unwinding. Oh dear, this one's not very good. <sighs> but also we knew he had lots going on later in the holidays because the Wednesday, oh, oh, these are just going everywhere and I'm just going with it. I'll pick them up afterwards, just anything to get them out of the back. <laughs> um, the Wednesday of half term, he was going to stay with uh, my in-laws, his grandparents. They always like to have him stay in the holidays and sometimes he goes for one night, sometimes he goes for two. It's up to him. He's not always sure about being away from home for two nights. Um, but this time he chose to, which was really good. Um, I think they like it when he goes for longer, although I think they were pretty tired by the time he was done because they did a lot. I think the first day they went and played, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm going to swish some of this around in there. Um, this is rubbing alcohol, by the way. And I'm just going to get some on a cotton bud and swill it around in there. And just to help with the static, because I think those are going to be a nightmare to get out of the bottom of there. <laughs> um, yeah, so they went and did, was it pitch and putt or, or mini golf or something, something golf related. <laughs> And then the next day they went to the cinema and saw the Mario Brothers film, 
which is, as I said to my husband, frankly, I am delighted that someone else has taken him so we don't have to do that. I didn't fancy it much. Um, and then that, I think they went out for lunch as well. And then that evening they went to the 2020 cricket at Leicester. I've mentioned before that my son's now really into cricket and he's joined a cricket club and he's going to practice sessions. In fact, I spoke about it because he was unsure if he wanted to go anymore because he hadn't instantly made friends. And the upshot to that was that he did keep going because we said to him that you've got to give these things a bit of time. You need to try it out for a while. Um, if you're really not enjoying it a few weeks down the line, then absolutely we're not going to make you go. But quitting after week two when you really want to play cricket, but just because you feel like you don't know people yet, you're just, you're going to miss out. Um, so he went and then that first time he went back after all of this discussion, he made a friend and now he's happiest Larry there. So yeah, really into his cricket at the moment. So they went to watch this 2020 game. Which, again, you know, another thing that I'm really glad he got to have the experience without me having to be the one that takes him. Because I can't say that cricket is a particular love of mine. <laughs> oh, gosh, I spilled loads of that one and I didn't even realise until I put the pot down and realised something was crunching underneath it. It's good because there's not actually that many of that colour. I might have got in a pickle. Okay. All these little bags are not great for static, which is a shame. Anyway, so yeah, he went and he had a brilliant time. And when he's away, that is my husband and my chance to spend some time together as well. Because as I said before, we don't live near any family. I mean, we don't live, you know, a terribly long distance away either. But his family are the closest and it's sort of an hour and 20 minutes away. So it's not... Oh, I need to get a bigger tray, I think. It's not just popping in for a couple of hours while we go out for dinner kind of distance. It's always um, something a bit more involved for them to look after him. So... Um, we had a bit of free time, but I mean, it was the working week, so my husband did have to work as well, but he'd arranged it so that he didn't have to do too much because he is a very flexible job. He's, um, he's an academic, so he schedules most of his own teaching work and that kind of thing. And actually, this is a quiet term where there's not so much on. He had things like marking for exam papers to do and that kind of thing, but he was able to swing it so that he could have a fair bit of time off. So we went on the Thursday, we went out for lunch. We went to a place that I had got a voucher for, for my husband for his birthday. It was called, um, now what was it called? You know how bad I am with names. I think it was Vazu and it was a restaurant in Marlow um, owned by Atul Kutcher, who's a sort of Michelin star chef who's, you know, got a good name for himself. This restaurant wasn't Michelin stars, um, but, you know, it, it was it was elevated beyond um, what you normally get for the cuisine. It was Indian cuisine, and Indian cooking is very, very popular in the UK, but I think what we generally eat when we go to an Indian restaurant is not very authentic. It tends to be quite... Um, quite similar from place to place, you know. So this was having it in a fine dining kind of way. You could tell it was fine dining because the portions were tiny. <laughs> but we did manage to eat enough. Um, we had three courses. This was, this was the, the reason for going at lunchtime was it was a lot cheaper, <laughs> as is often the case with places like this. We had um, a three course menu each for 25 pounds each. Whereas the a la carte menu for the evenings, There'd be mains on there for sort of £38, I think I saw some of them. Even vegetarian ones, which is what my husband eats. <laughs> so we had a really nice lunch. Had a little wander around Marlow, which I don't think I've been to before. And then came back and my husband did a bit of work. And then in the evening we went to the pub for a couple of drinks. Again, just because we could really. 
Um, because, you know, we don't tend to do that kind of thing too often when my son's home because he gets bored. And then we had a Jane the Virgin marathon. <laughs> we're still watching it. I must have mentioned it months ago that we were working our way through Jane the Virgin. We tend to go through fits and starts with it. We'll, we'll watch loads and loads and loads for a few days and then we'll have a break where we don't watch any for a while. And I think we got to the point where we've only got three episodes left. Um, and we've been saying all week, oh, we must actually watch those. And we haven't got around to it yet. <laughs> Absolutely hopeless. But yeah, we're enjoying that. So it was a really nice break for all of us. I think with my son being away for a couple of days, it means that it's a change of pace for all of us. Um, so it, it's a nice point in time to have a little break. What else has been going on? Oh, the end of half term, we saw some friends as well. Um, I've mentioned them before, I think, just that we we have these friends that we've known for a long time since um, since antenatal classes. And we don't get to see each other as often anymore because the kids go to different schools. We live across the city from each other. We're not just around the corner. And everyone's super busy all the time. So we went for a walk. My husband had picked out this place from a wildlife book that he had. And it took us a while to find it because we were looking for this car park and it was down a little track behind a gate. So you had to really trust the coordinates of where we were to open the gate to go down there. Anyway, we went and had a really nice walk around there in the sun. Um, unfortunately, it was the day that everyone's hay fever had kicked in, so there was that, <laughs> but it was manageable. And then we went back to their house for a bit, and my friend and I had a couple of glasses of wine, which was very nice, and sat in the garden and chatted and caught up. And then we ended up coming home and getting a Chinese takeaway because I just, yeah, <laughs> it was a bit done. <laughs> After not sleeping well, going for a walk, having a couple of glasses of wine, I was sleepy. So yeah, it was a nice few days. Other than that, what else has been going on? I suppose it makes sense for me to do a shop update at times like this. Um, I don't want to go on about the shop all the time on my channel, but if I'm filling you in on my life, then it, it feels a lot more relevant. And so things are going well. Um, if you haven't heard me talk about the shop before this video, um, what I specialise in is scented and coloured diamond painting putty. Um, I have a few other bits and bobs too, like cover minders and multi-placers and pots and things. And I, I plan to expand the range in the future, but I don't want to have just, you know, any old thing on there. So I'm quite choosy about what I think is worth adding in. But as I say, the main focus really is the diamond painting putty anyway. And I'm up to, is it eight or nine cents at the moment? Because I've been adding a new scent every week. Um, just until I get enough choice in there that there's something for everyone. It's nice to keep adding new ones and keeping it fresh, I, file, I, I find. Just off to get more drills. These are the last of them, so it's not going too badly. Um, yeah, so I find that really fun actually. Choosing new scents, what I fancy, what people have requested, that kind of thing. Um, and then figuring out how I'm going to make them look because I colour my putties and then making it, making sure I get the balance of scent right, testing them out of course because I always test things before I actually put them up for sale. It's, um, it's really fun and it sort of shapes my week because I need to do certain things at certain points of the week. Um, but it also means of course that I'm feeling quite busy because between working on the new scent and then restocking any that have sold because I like to keep as much in stock as possible. I'm just, I'm planning things out well. I'm getting better at it a few weeks in. I'm getting on top of things, but making sure that I'm on top of things with the shop and on top of the things 
that I need to film and edit and upload for this channel. And then also remembering to do little things like TikToks, um, because I'm trying to build up things on that platform as well. I just, some weeks I feel like I've spread myself a little thin, but mostly I'm enjoying the busyness after years of being less busy. I also want to start doing things ideally like, um, like I've been practicing making my own cover minders and also diamond painting pens. So you know the um, polymer clay pens um, that you can get? And they won't be anything fancy because, you know, I'm... I don't have a ton of practice still with polymer clay. Obviously, I won't be putting anything up for sale until I think it's, I've got good enough that it's sale ready. But it's a way that I can offer really quite inexpensive pens that are a bit thicker for people who do want a thicker pen than what comes with the kit. Oh, that was close. So that's something I've got in the offing as well. And I'm working on opening up to international sales as well. That's something that I've been asked about quite a lot because I know there are a few people who are international customers who are keen to try it. And obviously I am keen to be able to sell to you as well. There's a few things that make it tricky that I'm trying to work out. Um, one is just figuring out the right price point to do it at. So for places like the US and Canada and Australia and places like that, um, I just need to figure out how to make it cost effective because Etsy charges their fee on the whole amount that you pay at a shop. So if you buy something from a shop, like if someone in the UK buys my putty, for instance, they pay £4 for the putty and uh, £2.90 for shipping at the moment. Now, international shipping, um, like tracked good shipping with Royal Mail, is something like £8.60. Um, so it's not horrendous really for international shipping. But when I looked into all this, I realised why it costs so much if I buy something like putty from the US. Because Etsy are charging their percentage on that whole amount. So you, if you paid, say, the £8.65 plus the £4 putty, and then Etsy took their same percentage off all of it, including off the shipping, it would work out that I wasn't making a penny on the putty, pretty much. So what I need to do is find the balance um, where I can charge a reasonable amount for shipping that isn't going to be absolutely, you know, uh, exorbitant for people to pay, but also, you know, still make a little bit of money on each sale because I, I can't be operating at a loss for obvious reasons. So there's that whole thing that I'm working on working out. Um, and it does mean, you know, just a heads up, when I open for international shipping, unfortunately, it, it, I won't be able to offer bargain basement prices because it needs to be tracked for security. And yeah, as discussed, <laughs> that bumps the price a little bit. Um, and then the other thing is, when I'm thinking about shipping into the EU, there are extra regulations. So I have to have a particular label on my putties called a CLP label. Um, which is, um, it tells you what's in it. It tells you potential allergens, basically. Um, and then there's an extra thing that I need to do for selling into the EU, which is, it, I've looked into it. I've had advice from some very kind people who know how to do it. Um, but yeah, it's a bit daunting. So I need to figure all that out. Anyway, the aim is to get on top of all of this as soon as possible but it's probably still gonna take me a little while because I don't want to do that until I'm completely comfortable. So yeah, that's your update if you're an international potential buyer for the future. And I will of course let people know. In the meantime, I do have a Facebook group that I've set up um, to help sort of support the shop if you like. So I'll put that up on the screen now, the link to it, and you are welcome to join even if you haven't bought from me yet. Um, I use it basically to do any shop updates. So I will tease new scents through the week. I'll let people know if I'm having any issues with postage. I'll let people know if I have any new products, just any kind of updates. I will tend to put on there. And then when I launch new scents, I put it on Instagram. But again, I don't want to be constantly spamming Instagram with this stuff. So the Facebook group is where you will get the most information if that is something that you want. 
And also I'm hoping over time um, it will grow to be a place where people can, you know, just chat about all things diamond painting as well. Absolutely doesn't have to be dominated by my shop. So yeah, I, I put the link up as I said, and um, you're welcome to join. The more the merrier in fact. I think we're up to 60 something members now and it's only been set up for a couple of weeks. So, you know, it's going all right. I also did a giveaway recently. That was fun to do. So once I hit 200 sales on Etsy, um, I ran a giveaway where people needed to join that Facebook group and comment on a post. And that was all they had to do. And the winner got to pick two in stock items from the shop um, for free. <laughs> and I was able to open that up to international buyers, uh, international potential customers, international people as well <laughs> um, because um, it was a gift basically so the things that I need to do in order to sell internationally weren't relevant but it was a UK person who won I did a random number draw and yeah she's received her items so yeah so that's what's going on with the shop you'll probably notice I've started to um, just run a little either intro or outro on my videos just reminding people of the shop details. I apologise if you feel like I'm going on about it too much. It's, um, yeah, I'm trying to find the balance because I really don't want to just go on about the shop all the time, but at the same time, I, I do want people to know about it. So hopefully I'm treading the balance okay. And please forgive me if I'm not. Right, just a few left. What did people pick up in Diamond Art Club's anniversary sale on the weekend? I'm not sure when this video will, will be going up. I can't remember when I've scheduled it for, but um, yeah, there was a big anniversary sale. Diamond Art Club surprised us because last year they did an anniversary sale for their fourth anniversary in April. So people were expecting the same thing and then they didn't do it because they were moving warehouse and they just said, oh, we're not doing it. And then it gets to a month later <laughs> And we have an anniversary sale. I was really, really, really thrilled to be um, asked to do a sneak peek. And I got to pick a painting that I loved so much. If you haven't watched my sneak peek and you fancy checking it out, you will be able to see how much I enjoyed it because I was just wowed by it. And then I did pick up two other paintings in the sale. I actually set an alarm for 5 a.m. because that's when the VIP release started. Um, and the paintings that I wanted did sell out very quickly <laughs> so I was glad I did it but I did feel a little mad <laughs> it was like the, the obsession really has taken over a friend did the same thing and we were actually chatting till late the night before I think we were chatting till about two in the morning um, we'd both had a couple of drinks <laughs> But I figured I'm not going to get to sleep early enough that I'll have had my full night's sleep before 5am. So I really may as well just go to bed when I feel ready for bed. And then I know I'll be able to go back to sleep afterwards. Anyway, it worked. <laughs> but yeah, it looked like they did really well. Had some really popular paintings and there was a great discount. So everyone I'm sure was happy. I'm looking forward to working on this painting. I haven't worked on a DAC square in, well, a few weeks since I finished Butterflies in the Garden. I'm coming up to the end of an evening stroll. I'm not sure if you will have seen the post review already or not. As I say, I can't remember when I've scheduled what <laughs> and things change anyway. Um, and that one has been an absolute delight to work on really really enjoyed it considering it's a painting that I considered de-stashing at one point I'm very glad I didn't um so I've got that one that I've just got I'm, I'm working on the last row and then I have a couple of other whips on the go as well but I thought I would like to have this one going I think once I finish an evening stroll I'm going to go back and do a bit more of my other two and make a bit more progress but they're both ones where um, I'm working them on them in a bit more of a bitty way. Whereas an evening stroll, I've just kind of got really into it and worked straight through. 
Often for me these days it's about confetti, um, that's usually the difference. So there can be a painting that I really, really love and I'm enjoying, but if it's heavy and confetti, I'll probably do it bit by bit and take breaks because that just, yeah, it overwhelms me more than it used to. I think it's the downside to getting more comfortable with a multi-placer, to be honest, because that's, I like the satisfaction of getting through things quicker with a multi-placer so much that it makes confetti just a little bit more, not less enjoyable, but just more intense because I feel like it's taking me so long I get up in my head about it. put some tin foil in that one. I've been quite random which, which static techniques I've used for which drills really. This one looks like it needs a stir around with my uh, rubbing alcohol dipper. Oh yeah, look at that one. It's like trying to climb out of there. <laughs> So yeah, I've got a couple of hours now till I need to pick my son up from school. So I've got to figure out how to use the rest of my day best because I do have quite a lot I need to get done. And I'm just trying to figure out what's the best way to fit things. I've got to have lunch. I do need to make a batch of putty. I need to do more washing and that kind of thing. It's bed change day or it needs to be at least. So I need to try and get on with that. And then, yeah, the school run just sort of breaks things up a bit because I've got to be able to stop whatever I'm doing and go out at three o'clock. I'm sure that when my son is old enough to walk to and from school himself, I will desperately miss doing the school run. But yeah, right now, some days I could do without it. <laughs> colours to go. Has anyone else worked on this painting? I think it was a fairly popular one when it came out. Maybe not the most popular of the Richard Lorenzes but he's quite a sweet little grumpy so-and-so the bird on this one. Okay, last one. That really wasn't too bad. A little bit of static in some of the bags, but nothing horrendous. I mean, let's think back to when I kitted up a house on a cliff, which I think is the worst it's ever been, and that had 60 something colours, and it just took me hours. I don't think I had rubbing alcohol then, and I do find that helpful. Oh. This bag's got a bit bent, so it's not pouring out properly. There we are, a good one to finish with. It's gone everywhere. <laughs> okay. So, I am done. That has gone nice and smoothly. I've got a few um, bags here that I didn't quite fit in and then these are those bags that I put aside and didn't even open. So they can get tucked in the lid. And I'm all set and ready to go with Cletus. Oh, I haven't put them all in straight. That's gonna annoy me. I'm gonna have to go fix that now. <laughs> here they are. So thank you very much for watching today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. As ever, if you have enjoyed the video, please consider dropping a like on it. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel and you've enjoyed what you've seen, I would love to have you stick around um, and, and join me for more videos in the future. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.